Greetings, and welcome to Red and April Off Grid. We've taken off a week to work on our garden, and now we're getting back to the home build. In this episode, we work on the evaporative cooler, get the gutters finished up, and we spend some time helping our son Kyle work on his hyper adobe structure on his piece of the property. One small follow-up task that we wanted to attend to is to add ventilation to the air gap created by the purlins between the metal sheeting on our roof and the underlayment part, the foam part. And in order to do that, I needed to, first of all, put up a place to put my ladder on so I don't scratch the trim. That's what I'm doing now. I also have these little spacers that I'm getting ready to put in, in between the eave and the side trim, in order to move that side trim out and create a gap. That gap will allow the air to flow into that cavity created by the purlin. It's about an inch and a half space there. and It'll just allow the air to move back and forth. Right now that trim was kind of flat up against the side of the eaves and those little spacers just moved it out en enough that it allowed it to breathe and the air to flow. This was just a small way that we felt like we could easily create some ventilation. It doesn't need a lot of air movement, just enough to allow the heat to dissipate in that cavity there. This isn't like an official way you're supposed to do it. This is just an idea we had we thought we'd try. Now we're moving on to working on the evaporative cooler. We picked this up at Home Depot. They had a brand there that I liked, but they only come in this kind of tan beige color, which we didn't like at all. And so we decided to sand that down just to get some grit for the paint. And then we're using the same paint that we used on the beams for the house, just to make it a color that would go with the house. And we just thought it'd be a lot more attractive and, and wouldn't stand out, would more blend into the home. And so that's what I'm working on here. Just took the side panels off and I'm doing all the prep on those and then painting those. And then I'll paint the body of the cooler later. And here I'm starting on the platform for the evaporative cooler. I'm using treated lumber and I'm building a pretty heavy duty little structure here because evaporative coolers can be pretty heavy when they're full of water. And so I've got the platform built here and I'm putting the legs on now. We've had evaporative coolers in the past and we really like them. They're, they don't use much energy, so they're a low energy solution for, for us since we're on solar. That, that was a big concern. They use some water, but we have a well, so we're good there. They also have some multifunction capabilities, so you can turn the water on or off and just use them as a fan. If you don't want the water option, which we, we want to be able to do that at night, so that'll actually push air through our house and allow us to cool at night. And then during the day, when we want the cooling action, we turn the water on and then we get that evaporative cooling action, which is very effective during dry summer months and even somewhat effective during the more humid months. Well, I've finished up the base for now. We've had some windy days here and so it's presented some challenges, but we've been helping out our son Kyle work on his place a little bit. Kyle is planning to build a hyper adobe structure on his property and in order to do that he needs a dolly in order to fill the hyper adobe bags. We've seen other channels do that and so in fact we got the instructions on how to do this from Tiny Shiny Home Channel and followed their video instructions on how to do this. It worked out great. We went down to the hardware store and found a dolly uh, that kind of met the requirements. The main requirement is that it has to have a removable axle so that you can change the position of the tires to put them closer together so that the tires actually roll on top of the Hyper Adobe bag as you're filling that bag and moving it along the wall. And so that's what I'm doing here is I'm repositioning the tires and just using some PVC in order to get the spacing correct in that new position. Once you get the tires moved into the middle, the shaft will stick out of either side because it's you know still the same length for those tires being on the outside. And so you have to create some little spacers there out of the PVC pipe to take up that extra gap. All in all, you can use the same lock washers and pins there to keep it all in place. You just need the addition of that pipe to hold everything in the new spacing orientation. It worked out really well. I got some solar lights. For the garden, excited to get them put up. Here I am working on the backboard for the shoot of that dolly. For the last few days, I've been helping Kyle work on his house. Specifically, we've been working on bringing the utilities into the pad. So a very exciting part of that process for him to get all those utilities brought in and stubbed up and ready to go. He's been working on digging the footer by hand and he's actually got that almost done. It's filled with gravel, so it'll be a packed gravel footer. And that'll be the footer slash foundation for the his house, which would be, as we mentioned, a hyper adobe wall house. This backboard creates an angle 
for the bag to follow kind of as it's coming out of the chute there. That's the reason all this wood is here is just to create that angle. The next thing I'm working on is what I call the chute itself. And to do that, I've just got two five gallon buckets. And right now I'm putting the back on one bucket. This will be used to mount the brackets on that will actually hold the bucket onto the dolly itself. So put a piece of wood on the inside and outside, screw those two pieces of wood together to create a, a firm place that you can affix other things to. Then I put on two metal brackets. As you can see there, those brackets just bend over and hook to a bar on the back of the dolly. And then there's one other piece of wood I put on there to kind of keep it uh, out a little ways. The next thing was to cut a hole in the bottom of one bucket and then to cut off the bottom of the other bucket, slide the two together and get that angle about right and then just tape them together to secure it. For those who may not be familiar with the what a hyper adobe home is, you're probably wondering what this contraption I'm building is. It is kind of an odd thing. So a hyper adobe home is basically an earth bag home that instead of using small individual bags, uses one continuous long bag that goes around and around the circumference. And so in order to feed that bag and feed dirt into that bag and kind of keep it moving, those who have done this created this dolly that expedites that process. And here's just a little peek of his construction site. Well, back to working on the cooler now, and I've got the main body of the cooler painted to match. Now I'm actually over at the location and I'm digging the holes for the feet of the base for the cooler. So getting ready to get that permanently affixed in place at the right elevation. So digging these holes down to the right elevation. I'm actually putting some rock in at the bottom, kind of a packed rock base that'll hold it firmly at the height. The height is real specific. It needs to be exactly the right height there. Along with the garden, we've been wanting to plant some trees and shrubs. And so April's got some of those that we'll be putting in. Very excited about that. Here in the background, you can see me working on the trench for the gutters. I wanted the gutters to run into an underground drain that would take the water away from the house. And so here I am digging the trench for that. Basically, it starts at where the gutter will end, and this is the underground drain that'll take it away from the house, a good 20, 30 feet down, down here. It, it actually works out really well on this end of the house, since the elevation drops off on this side of the house pretty rapidly. And there's a nice kind of low spot here where we'll take the water to, and that water can water some trees, some fruit trees and stuff that we want to plant down in this low spot, and should be a good place to kind of capture and hold some of that water that we get from the drain. So we're going to have the kids over for lunch. I'm going to make some fried chicken. Nice to be able to plug this in outside, not have oil splattering all over the place. Really enjoying this freezer. We got this just before our daughter's wedding. She wanted to make her cake and needed somewhere to put it. And we are intending to get one at some point anyway. So super nice to have that. And at some point we'll probably put it in the shipping container. Got the fried chicken going. And I've been working on getting these plants planted. I went into Ace Hardware yesterday, not intending to buy a bunch of plants, but they had a really good selection. So we got some vines to climb up the shipping containers, a few plants, and then a couple of pine trees that I planted down by the house site. So excited to get some stuff going. And here's a, a bush I planted here. We'll see how it does. I think it's called Fire Thorn, but it should get fairly big and have red berries on it which apparently are edible you can make jelly out of them excited to see how that does and the garden is doing well so red is working on getting the gutter hooked up looks like he's made pretty good progress already he had to dig a trench, spent most of the day yesterday working on the trench and working on the swamp cooler, evaporative cooler. So we'll go see how it's looking down there. Well, it's a beautiful day and I'm ready to start on this gutter again. I've got the trench all dug and I'm ready to work on the downspout itself. The first order of business was to punch a hole in the gutter and put in this 45. The next thing I'll do is put a 45 in the downspout itself, create that second 45, and then it'll follow the side of the house on down until it's about even with the base of the house or kind of even with the foundation. 
So here I'm working on that downspout. So this was like a 10 foot tall piece of three by three downspout material. And I just needed to create that 45 to meet up with the other 45 in order to get it closer to the house. It's kind of the whole point of those two 45s. In order to create a 45, I just got my saw here and cut. It's actually a, a high speed a disc cutter and cut three sides out and then cut some extra material on one side. And that gives it room so that when I bend it, I put one inside the other and create that 45. April has cooked fried chicken for lunch. We're having the family down. That's one of the great pleasures of being out here on the property with family is doing something like this, just a quick family lunch. It was just a great time. And here's a shot of the completed gutter. It follows the side trim all the way down, connects to that plastic pipe, which will then connect to the plastic line that will be underground and that takes it away from the house there. You can see me down in there expanding the trench. I'm taking it on back a little further because I'm going to use the same trench for our gas line. And so I realized I need to dig it deeper and longer in order to give this trench double use. Moving back to the evaporative cooler, I needed an air box to make the transition between the evaporative cooler and the house and decided to create that myself. So I bought some sheet metal, cut it, bent it, and riveted it myself. It was a fun little project. Here you can see I'm putting it in the wall and it fits pretty nice. I'm getting ready to put the cooler in so April helped me carry it over. We're getting it all fitted up and connected. Makes a pretty nice transition. We'll screw it into the cooler and then also attach it to the wooden framing box on the inside. Seal a few things up and then we'll be all done with this part of it. You can see here the finished look. It fits pretty nice. Comes out just shy of flush and should work pretty well for our cooling this summer. Well, April has enlisted me to help dig holes for these trees and bushes. The first one we're planting here is an elderberry. Very excited about this. Apparently it's a fruit bearing tree with edible fruit. Um, it smells fantastic. It's a, this is a really nice little tree. And so had to, it's got a pretty good uh, base. And so it took a pretty big hole. And so April and I are working together to get this put in that hole. She's, you can see that she's got a wire basket there that she's created to keep the critters from kind of burrowing in and you know, eating away at the roots. But she's also cut slits in there so that the roots can, can grow out and expand. So we have to take some pretty extreme measures at times to to keep the animals from damaging trees and new growth in this area. Here you can see April using some really good rich topsoil that she's collected from around the mesquite trees to fill in around this tree to give it some good soil to use. She's also going to build up a little berm to kind of hold the water in while we're watering it in its early life. And back to the trench, and you can see here the risers for the gas line. So shots of those risers installed, the gas line is installed. You can see the connectors connecting the plastic to those risers. Those risers are pretty pricey. And I've got it in the, the ditch, and I've buried the first part of the ditch. And I've actually buried the gas line all the way down. So the gas line is buried uh, between 8 inches and a foot deep. And then on top of that, I'm going to put the drain lines. With the gas line in, it's time to move on to the drain line. So the drain line I bought is a long, flexible piece of hose. I believe it's a four inch. It's kind of that accordion type flexible material. I believe it's 25 feet long. So it should be plenty long enough to get down to that low point that I wanted to take it down to. The first order of business here was to get the trench all kind of compacted and level and ready to receive this drain line. Once I got that done, it was really easy. Just put it in and started backfilling, tamping in around the edges and packing it in and then completing the backfill. This part I actually really enjoy. It's just really kind of fun and easy work. Very satisfying to see putting that, burying that trench and getting it all smoothed out and seeing the finished product was very satisfying. At the exit of the drain line, I built a trough of gravel and concrete. I had a couple of kind of trough shape piece of concrete that I put at the exit along with some other gravel to make a little chute that will slow down the water and keep it from eroding the area. We've been here for about a year now and I decided it'd be fun to check the cycle count on our batteries and we're at 107 so and most of that I'm sure happened through the winter time so but we're only getting about a cycle every three days on average so not bad at all. So here I am in the house. We put some 
card tables and beds and various things in here. So this has been a perfect place to hang out when we had a lot of people here for the wedding. My brother and his family are still here. They're camping out and kind of seeing the sights and doing some hiking. So this is pretty cool. Here's the temperature in the house. So we've been down to 28 degrees for a low and a high of about 86. And here's the temperature range in the house. So we have the foam sheeting on the outside and on the roof, two inches on the walls and two and a half inches on the roof. And still very efficient. We've had some super windy days. There's no breezes coming in. So everything seems to be sealed up really well. I think it'll be a great house once we get all the fiberglass insulation up. It should do really well. Okay, then.